I read more Lorraine Heath. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Now for today's video, I'm going to be doing my historical romance author guide and it's going to be centered around one of my favorite historical romance authors, Lorraine Heath. Now, if you guys didn't know or if you guys didn't watch it yet, definitely go check it out. But I did make a Lorraine Heath author's guide last year and I do have it up on my channel so if you want to watch me review more series by Lorraine Heath definitely should go check it out but this video will be focusing on her latest completed historical romance series called Sin for All Seasons. It's six books and I must admit it did take me quite a bit of time to finish the series mostly because it was six books and I was kind of entering into a reading slump and also other opinions that I will discuss more about in this video. And I would also be talking about one other book that she has written that has been published just recently and it's actually the first book in her new series called Once Upon a Dukedom. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because Once Upon a Dukedom series is actually kind of related to Sin for All Season series and that is just so fun for me when two series um, from one author kind of bleed in with each other. You know, you meet some characters from one series and then they expand and they get their own books too as well so I thought that was a fun tidbit but let's get started on discussing what are the six books. So the first book in the series is Beyond Scandal and Desire and this one is a hardcover copy that I got at a book fair for fairly cheap but the rest of the books that I do have are in mass paperback copy format. The second book in the series is actually When a Duke Loves a Woman. The third book in the series is The Scoundrel in Her Bed. The third book in the series is The Duchess in His Bed. The fifth book in the series is The Earl Takes a Fancy. And then the last book in the series is Beauty Tames the Beast. So overall for this series, it did take me quite a bit of time to finish the series. I think over a span of maybe three months, it did take me to finish it. I had a reading slump in April and then I kind of forgot about the series. I was thinking and considering of DNFing the series overall. So I guess that says the sentiment of this video. I wasn't too impressed by the series and it's definitely not one of my favorite ones, but I think it has more to do with my personal preference and I'll go in a deeper dive with each book. Now overall this series is actually focusing on a very darker element that we typically don't see in historical romance but it's definitely part of history. It's, it focuses around baby farming. Females have babies out of wetlock, it's shamed upon, and they don't want to keep the babies because there is a lot of drama and there is a lot of social stigma against it and you'll basically be shunned by the ton. So what they do is that they secretly deliver these babies and then these babies are often sold or put into orphanages and then these babies are kind of cast away and they are usually able to survive or they don't and their upbringing is a little bit dark and a little bit murky. So Lorraine Heath decided to focus her six books on six characters who did unfortunately come from these backgrounds where they don't know who their true parents are and they don't know about their history much and they have grown up in childhood where they are shunned by society and that they aren't as squeaky clean as maybe their heroines or the heroes that they do fall in love with. And so overall this series is definitely not as lighthearted as her other books where our characters are in a social class of upstanding and people want to be them. This one definitely has a darker tone to it with characters who suffered a lot of trauma from their childhoods and their adulthoods and so this is what you are walking into. So the first book in the series is Beyond Scandal and Desire. Now this one sets the stage of our whole entire series. We meet our main hero who is the legitimate son of a duke and obviously he does not have access to the funds and anything that the duke has to offer because he is shunned. And so our hero decides to grow up in his condition and use it to his advantage and become a successful businessman. But overall, he is still holding a major grudge on his father for not providing for him, not providing for his mother. And this has caused him to kind of grow up with this idea that he needs revenge and he's this dark character. So the one thing that he does want to do is ruin the Duke's life by making his legitimate son's life life 
miserable. So he actually tries to seduce the legitimate son's fiance, who is our main heroine. And then our main heroine actually grew up in an orphanage. She doesn't have parents, but she's able to be matched up with the Duke's legitimate son. She has literally no attachment to our Duke's legitimate son, but she does find our hero to be super intriguing. Now, overall, this book was a solid novel. I wouldn't say that I hated it, and I wouldn't say that this one was my favorite. I gave it kind of an average three out of five star rating, mostly because I was disappointed that I didn't get the romance and the fluffy parts and the chemistry that I would typically get with Lorraine He's novels. I just didn't feel the chemistry between our two characters, but mostly because I think our hero is just so enveloped in his toxic nature and wanting to get revenge and plotting against this duke and then also how the book was set up and discussing baby farming and how just unromantic it is so I didn't feel like that this one had a lot of romance in it it felt darker and I actually finished the book feeling a little bit gross because I was just so disappointed um, back then when people would just kind of give up their children and without even thinking about providing support to the baby or having a suitable organization to take care of the baby and things like that. So this one definitely was a three out of five stars and I read the second one next. So the second book in the series is this one called When a Duke Loves a Woman and now this one follows our female heroine who is actually abandoned on a doorstep. Her last name is True Love. And in our first book, our male character is also named True Love. They're not related, but they're all named um, True Love to be named after the woman that actually took the babies in and raise them together like a family. So they are kind of like brothers and sisters and connected in that way. And that's what I forgot to mention earlier on in this video. But our female heroine um, knows about the hardships of not being accepted and taken care of. So the one person that he does, that she does take care of is actually our hero who is left kind of beaten and battered and outside on her porch. So she takes him in and she actually ends up healing him and they kind of fall in love. But then what happens is that our hero is actually a duke and it's a noble status and they fall in love, but she also knows that he can never marry her because the social stigma around her parentage and how basically she is a lower class citizen compared to him. And there's going to be a lot of drama focusing on that. Now this one, I felt that this one had a romance that was supremely slow burn and I gave this one a three out of five stars. If you guys are new to my channel, then you guys would probably not know that I'm not a really big fan of slow burn romance. I kind of like romance to be a little bit medium heat. I like a little bit spice to it. I want to feel some chemistry, but this one unfortunately just felt so slow burn to the point that I didn't feel like that there was romance whatsoever. So then that's why I didn't really like this book. And at this point when I was reading it, I kind of had my sincere doubts about the series. So the third book in the series is called The Scoundrel in Her Bed. And now this one tells the story of one of our brothers and it's Finn True Love. And basically he is once again, you know, abandoned at the doorstep, raised in when the family, the True Love family had a really sad upbringing. But what's different about him is that he actually had some rendezvous nights and some romance in his childhood years with an earl's daughter and they were happily in love and they were actually going to run away together because they knew that their social classes would never allow them to be together so she wanted to run away with him and they were fully ready for a plan to do it but this one kind of had a romeo and juliet tale and twist to it so these two characters could, wanted to be together but fitted against each other the families definitely drove them apart and caused a lot of drama and commotion so that these two people would never be together and it was a very sad story overall like this one was just so sad because our characters went through so much pain and so much angst to really figure it out and to really be together in the end this one i gave actually a three and a half stars but i'm gonna give it a four stars because i wanted to round it up because i actually appreciated this novel even though it was super sad. So in the month of May I decided to pick up the book series again so I wanted to have a fresh start. You know I got over my reading slump. I thought that maybe I just needed to push through the series and the books will get better. So I ended up picking up book number 
four of the series. This one is called The Duchess in His Bed. And now this focuses on our female heroine who is actually a recent widow and she needs to find a man so that she can provide for her family and that she can have um, an heir. So basically her late husband and her did not produce an heir and she will lose all the rights to the estate and like money um, unless she has an heir. So her brother actually, actually suggests this to her that she gets pregnant with another man and then pass it off as the heir. So she decides to go to this place of sin, which is hosted and owned by one of our brothers of True Love Brothers. And asks him for lessons and now this one is kind of like one of those sensual novels that you find in historical romances where our main hero decides to teach our innocent heroine ways around the bed and this is kind of their romance. I quite enjoyed this novel a lot and it definitely gave me a lot of hope for the series in general. I gave this one overall a four out of five stars. I took one star off because I felt like that the middle was a little bit dragged and it felt a little bit long but overall I really liked how our two characters were faded together and were interacting with each other and there was actually some romance and some chemistry so the series definitely did pick up and I was excited to actually read the next book. So our next book in the series is The Earl Takes a Fancy and now this follows I think the youngest true love um, and she's a girl so she's a, one of the sisters and this one follows a girl that needs to marry right away and she is told by her stepmom or her mother or her orphan mother the mother that raised her and took care of her that she needs to find someone that can provide for her and to give her happiness so she takes it literally as in someone who has money and prestige and a lineage so that she can you know establish herself in society and and she actually owns a bookstore. If you are a reader who wants to read books about books, then this book is for you because she owns a bookstore and this is where she meets our hero. Our hero is actually an earl and then he is a recent widow and lots of females are flocking to him and want to be his next wife but he hates it and he hides himself away in her bookstore and that's where they meet and he lies about his identity and actually doesn't tell her that of his lineage and then because he wants to know if she actually likes him for him and not for his title and then this is kind of the love story between these two characters it started off really cute and really nice but I think it had more enemies to lovers romance in the beginning too as well because there was like a lot of teasing back and forth and then it became flirting and then it became lessons in kissing and overall I quite enjoyed this book I gave this one a four out of five stars when I was talking to Lorraine Heath on my Instagram live she actually mentioned how this one was kind of the toughest book to write mostly because Fancy is our main heroine she's the youngest sister and she had a very childlike personality in the previous books because these books take on like periods of years and so Fancy by the time of this book was at the ripe age of marriage so she was an adult now and then that's why Lorraine had trouble because she always imagined Fancy being a child and not an adult so definitely check this one out and also check out the previous book too. So the last book in the series is Beauty Tempts the Beast. Now this one was a very highly anticipated one for me mostly because I saw the word beast and I thought that this one was going to be a Beauty and the Beast kind of trope retelling story novel. Um, so this one was pretty interesting too. This one is actually about our female heroine who is very like put together. She has been trained all her life to be a lady but what happens is that tragedy strikes or drama strikes and her whole family has actually lost all its money, the title, everything that comes with financial stability. And now she actually works in a tavern as a person who serves you drinks like a waitress. And then afterwards, this is where she meets our hero named the Beast. And he's nicknamed the Beast because he's very temperamental. He's angry all the time. He's quite handsome. And but he's like really big and he will not be afraid to throw a fist if a certain male or male characters are being rude to ladies and this is how they meet in the tavern and she's captivated by him so they actually decide to set up a relationship and they have a relationship together where she, he teaches her how to seduce men and then she teaches um, the girls that he protects that sell their bodies and become prostitutes um, to be proper ladies so that they can 
get out of this uh, dark circle of situation of prostitution and kind of become something of us and find money in other ways by building their skill set. So this is kind of like the romance. Our hero is actually in charge of protection for prostitutes and that's his occupation. And that's where I thought like that was kind of like a little bit suspect. Like it was a little sus because I didn't really know if I really liked the fact that our hero is kind of being a factor in contributing to, you know, females selling their bodies, sometimes reluctantly selling their bodies. But then um, Lorraine put a little twist to it saying that our hero actually doesn't like it and wants to get these girls out of this dark vicious cycle so that's why I kind of liked it um, overall I thought that this book was pretty dark once again because I felt really bad for our main female heroine who clearly is suffering from losing everything her father actually committed treason and was actually killed by like the crown so she is shamed and shunned you would think that this book would have like some happy twists and ends to it but overall I just felt complete sadness and bleak darkness so definitely I gave this one a three out of five stars once again um it was a nice conclusion to the end and we got to meet some new characters that will be introduced in Once Upon a Kingdom this is the new book that just recently came out in March 2021 I think it's out on the shelves go pick it up the book is gorgeous the book is beautiful it's magnifique this one's called Scoundrel of My Heart it's part of Once Upon a Kingdom series and this follows our hero who is actually the brother of our heroine in Beauty Tempts the Beast. He is known to be as a spare to the heir. I, I think that's what they call it. But basically he is, just because he's second born, he doesn't get anything like anything and that was like the rule back then and I think in the IG live that I had with Lorraine Heath she actually talked about how much research she put into it and how much she learned about how characters about how people who are born second really are left with nothing and then this is kind of like the story of our female heroine who meets our main hero and they like each other but the problem is is that our main heroine would do better and is actually kind of in talks to marry his older brother and this is kind of like a star-crossed lovers romance it was definitely like more of a friends to lovers romance but it started off as our hero kind of teasing her and so it kind of felt like a light enemies to lovers and then it turned to friends to lovers and it was just so sweet and so cute i really liked how our hero was so kind and protective of our heroine and also he has a nickname for her that is like I wish I had cute nicknames and like people like called me cute nicknames that I could relate to but I got nothing right now and I overall really enjoyed this one. I felt like that this one definitely is a different tone from Sins for All Seasons. It was definitely lighter, it was more romantic and I would highly recommend you to check out Lorraine Heath's new books um, because this one was really good and really solid. Um, so definitely you do not need to read Beauty Tempts the Beast to read this one but it would help and it would make you a little bit happier to see it. Overall the whole series you can read it out of order like I really don't see a problem with reading it out of order. The only thing is is that certain characters do appear in other books and it might be confusing for you if you don't know um, but this book series was definitely Definitely not one of my favorites from Lorraine Heath, judging by my ratings of average three out of five stars and only maybe like two books that were a very low four out of five stars, but I still enjoyed it. So I'm going to give it a solid four out of five stars. Um, I definitely would recommend you to check out her other series that I did talk about and other standalone novels or not standalone novels but other novels that I specifically picked out and to be my favorites. Um, definitely check those ones out more than these books first. You know, one of the books that I do really like and I won't stop liking and recommending is Once More My Darling Rogue and it just felt like it was such a perfect summer novel. It's about this female heroine who is basically an heiress. She's a ditz but she's also mean and she's very like materialistic about a lot of things. So she snubs our hero because our hero doesn't come from a lot of money. So our hero is upset by her because they kind of have this attraction for each other but she's unwilling to look away from how he's not like as rich as others. Um, so one night 
she falls into the lake and she actually loses her memory and then he saves her and then he tells her that you know you're actually a maid in my house and then she's confused at first because she doesn't feel like she's a maid and she feels like she's more well groomed and educated than a maid would be but she goes along with the story and she actually you know cleans the house and that's how he takes his revenge but that's also how they fall in love because you know they're able to see their differences and also be in close proximity with each other anyways that is it for my video guide for the sins for all season series hopefully you guys enjoyed it let me know if you guys actually read these books and let me know your thoughts and feelings definitely i feel like my reviews and my feelings and sentiment towards these books are all personal i typically don't like darker historical romances so maybe it's a personal preference thing but let me know anyways and i'll see you guys again next time Bye.